Good morning. We are so glad you are here. Welcome to Kids Time. We are going to have another great day learning about Jesus from the Jesus Storybook Bible. So I hope you will be ready to go. We are getting ready to sing first. I need everybody standing. We are going to have Miss Missy join us. We are going to be singing a couple of songs for you and you're going to join us. So make sure you are standing because this is Get Your Wiggles Out time. And you're going to have to bear with us because there's some really fast parts to this song. And sometimes Miss Missy and I can't get all the hand motions. We're going to do our best. So join in and try to follow along. And we hope that you will enjoy this song. It's an oldie but a goodie. A light to my path by the word of the Lord Where the heavens lay, he spoke and it came to be The word of the Lord will stand forever turn 
the storytelling over to Miss Missy and she's going to help you uh, review and talk a little bit about what you learned last week and then she's going to go into our story for this week. So everybody take a seat wherever you are standing you can sit down and um, she'll make sure that you also have your Jesus Storybook Bible so if you don't already have it make sure you get it. So I'm going to turn the floor over to you Miss Missy. Okay thank you Miss Stacy. Um, hey y'all hey boys and girls so um, last week um, here's kind of this board has some pictures up that you may remember from last week's lesson. Last week um, was the what we call the Last Supper. It was the supper that Jesus had with his disciples right before he was arrested to go to the cross. And we call it the Last Supper because it was the last supper he had with his disciples and it was the Passover meal. And if you remember, that's when Jesus washed his disciples' feet. Um, and so we saw him in that story as the servant king. He's not a king who comes like an important person. He's a king who comes like a humble person and serves people. And we also saw him as the Passover lamb because he is the, he is the lamb of God that would die to pay the price for all our sin. And we saw him betrayed by his friend Judas for 30 pieces of silver. And then, of course, you know, this was all in the, um, while they were eating dinner together, Jesus and his disciples. So today we're going to talk about what happens after that dinner they leave dinner and they go to this place called the Garden of Gethsemane where Jesus will be arrested and that's the story we're going to tell now, okay? So if you have your Jesus Storybook Bible, we're on page 294 and the title of the story is A Dark Night in the Garden. So if you don't have your Bible, you can pause the tape now and go get it. Pause the tape. <laughs> My age is showing. It's not a tape, is it? Anyway, okay, here we go. This is from Luke 22. Mark 14 and John 18. So this story appears in our Bible three different times told by three different people. The wind was picking up now, blowing clouds across the moon, shrouding the garden in darkness. Stay up with me, Jesus asked his friends. They said yes, and they waited under the olive trees, but they were tired and they soon fell asleep. Jesus walked ahead alone in the dark because he needed to talk to his heavenly father. He knew it was time for him to die. They had planned it long ago, he and his father, and Jesus was going to take the punishment for all the wrong things that anybody had ever done or ever would do. Papa, father, Jesus cried, and he fell to the ground. Is there any other way for you to get your children back to heal their hearts to get rid of this poison but Jesus knew there was no other way all the poison of sin was going to have to go into his own heart you see God was going to pour into Jesus's heart all the sadness and all the brokenness that was in people's hearts and he was going to pour into Jesus's body all the sickness that's in people's bodies. And God was going to have to blame his son for everything that had gone wrong. It was going to crush Jesus. But there was something else, something even more horrible. When people ran away from God, they lost God. It's what happened when they ran away. And not being close to God is like a punishment. And Jesus was going to take that punishment. Jesus knew what that meant. He knew he was going to lose his father. And that Jesus knew would break his heart in two. And so violent sobs shook Jesus's body that night in the garden. Then Jesus got quiet. And like a lamb, he said, I trust you, Papa. Whatever you say, I will do. Suddenly, through the trees, a glitter of starlight flashed off steel. Into the quiet garden came whispers, muffled voices, clanking metal, and the sound of boots marching. Jesus stood up. He woke his friends. Now is the time, he said gently. Everything that was written about me, what God has been telling his people all through the long years, it's all coming true now. 
and into the night with burning torches and lanterns, with swords and clubs and armor, they came, an army of soldiers. Judas led them straight to Jesus so they could arrest him. And Jesus was waiting for them. Peter leapt up. He took a sword and he tried to defend Jesus. He sliced off a guard's ear. Jesus immediately touched the guard and healed him. Peter, he said, this is not the way. Peter didn't realize that no army, no matter how big, could ever arrest Jesus. Not unless Jesus let them. Then Jesus, who had never done anything except love people, was arrested as if he were a criminal. Jesus' friends were afraid, so they ran away and hid in the darkness. The guards marched Jesus off and took him to the leaders. The leaders put Jesus on trial. Are you the son of God, they said. I am, said Jesus. Who do you think you are to call yourself God? You must die for calling yourself the son of God. Only, only the Romans were allowed to kill prisoners, so the leaders made a plan. We'll tell the Romans so they we'll tell the Romans that this man wants to be our king, and then they'll have to crucify him. But it would be all right, because this was God's plan. It was for this reason that I was born into the world, Jesus said. So you'll have to come back next week to find out the next what happens next in the story. But Jesus, um, here's what I want you to do. I want you to think for a second about the person that you love most in the world. Maybe it's your mom, your dad, a grandparent. Maybe it's a friend or a brother or sister. Think about the person you love most in the world. And think about um, how much you enjoy being near them and being close to them. Now, what I want you to understand is that God's love for Jesus is more than that love. And Jesus' love for God the Father is more than that. The, how much they love each other and how much they enjoy being close to one another is way greater than anything we can imagine. It's way greater than the love we have for the person we love most in the world. And so when Jesus and God the Father knew that they were going to be separated from each other, it was a very very hard thing. And so Jesus that night in the garden was having a hard time because he, a part of him, did not want to go through with this because it would mean suffering terribly and being separated from his father whom he loved so much. But at the same time, Jesus wanted to rescue us because he loves us and because he wanted to obey the father who loves us. And so he was he wanted to do it because he wanted to rescue us, but it was going to be hard for him. But notice at the end, Jesus went forward and did it. He did it because he loves us and he wanted to rescue us. Now, what was it he was rescuing us from exactly? We talk about sin. So what is sin? Um, I think you probably, most of you know the answer to this, but sin is that um, it's those bad things we do. It's anytime we steal or anytime we lie or anytime we're selfish um, anytime we disobey our parents, but it's more than that. It's like this blackness in our heart that makes us think that we don't need God. Or it makes us think that we can live without God. It makes us run from God. So anytime we run from God or think we don't need him, that's sin. And it's a problem way too big for us to solve. But the good news is we don't have to solve it. Because Jesus solved it for us, carrying out the plan that, the, that God the Father had established from the beginning of the world to save us. So now that we've done the story and Miss Missy shared the story with you, we're going to do a little bit of question asking to see how much of the story you remember. So I'm going to ask questions, and if, the, you th if you think that the answer is yes, you will jump forward, so you need to be standing up for this activity. And if you think the answer to the question is no, then you will jump backwards. You'll hop backwards. So as you, um, 
as you listen to the questions, think about what you think the answer is and jump forward if it's yes and backwards if it's no. All right, so here we go. Question number one. Were Jesus and his disciples in the garden? Yes or no? Here's your answer. Hope you jump forward because so, it was a yes. So if you jump forward, you are correct. The answer is yes, they were in the garden. Question number two. Jesus asked the disciples to stay up with him and pray. Did they stay up? If you jumped backwards, you got it right. They did not stay awake. Question number three. Did Jesus know it was time for him to die? Yes, he knew all along that it was time for him to die. Number five. Did Jesus and his father plan the rescue and Jesus' death from the very beginning? Yes. If you jump forward, you got the answer correct. Next question. Was there any other way for Jesus to rescue us other than by dying. No. So if you jumped backwards, you got the answer correct. Next question. Did Jesus cry out and pray in the garden about his death? Yes. So if you jump forward, you got it right. Next question, did Jesus end his prayer by saying to God, whatever you say, I will do? Yes, so if you jumped forward, you got the answer right. And here's the last question I'm going to ask, and I'm going to turn the questions over to Miss Missy, and I will be the one to jump to answer the questions. Did the soldiers want to arrest Jesus? Yes, they did. So if you jumped forward, you got it right. So now we'll go switch questions, switch right. places, and I'm going to jump to answer the questions. All right. Loosen up your muscles, Miss Stacy. Jumping's right. hard work. All right. Um. Had Jesus ever done anything wrong? Correct. Jesus had not done anything wrong, so you should have jumped backwards on that, just like Miss Stacy did. Good. Um, did the soldiers take Jesus to the leaders to be put on trial? It's kind of hard. But the answer is yes. Good job, Miss Stacy. Hope you guys jumped forward because the answer is yes. The soldiers did take Jesus to the leaders to be put on trial. When the leaders ask Jesus if he is the Son of God, does he disagree? No, he does not disagree. He says, I am. He was not afraid. To say who he was. So I hope you jump back because the answer was no. Jesus did not disagree. Okay, good. All right, next question. Were the leaders angry at Jesus? Yes, they were. So I hope you jump forward. They, they were angry at him. Next question. Were the leaders allowed to kill prisoners? Correct. They were not allowed to kill prisoners. Um, only, well, I better not say what I'm about to say because it could ruin the next question. So the next question is, would the leaders plan to have the Romans kill Jesus' work? Yes, it did. That's correct. 
The, the leaders were angry at Jesus, but they couldn't kill him, so they got the Romans to kill him on their behalf, and the plan worked. And our last question, the most important question, was this part of God's plan? Absolutely it was. This was God's plan to rescue us because he loves us and Jesus loves us so much that they were willing to be separate from each other to do this great thing so mm -hmm. that you and I mm -hmm. could be friends with God. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. Is there anything else we need to tell them except we look forward to seeing them next week? I just like that thing that the book said about um, about where it says, where Jesus said, Lord, I trust you. Whatever you say, I'll do. Mm. And mm -hmm. I think it would be really neat if we, like you and me, Miss Stacy, like took it as our personal challenge. And maybe the boys and girls want to do this too. It would be good for y'all to do it too. Like to think about that this week and think, I trust the Lord, and so I'm going to do whatever he asked me to do. I think we ought to pray about that before we send them on their way. Let's do that. Let's do that. Okay. So everybody close your eyes. I'm going to say the Lord's Prayer, and then we'll say it together, mm -hmm. and then I'm just going to close with a prayer to Jesus to just thank him for this lesson and to ask him to help us with remembering that um, we can do whatever he asks us to do. Okay? Good, good. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. And Lord, we, we thank you. We thank you, Jesus, for this lesson today that reminds us that, that being in the garden was dark and that you prayed. You prayed so much to your Father in heaven um, and you told him when you prayed that whatever it was that he asked you to do, that you would do it. So, Lord, we ask you this week to help us to remember to pray also. Help us to remember that we can come to you anytime, whether it's sunshine and outside or whether it's dark outside, whether we feel happy or we're lonely, that we can come to you, Lord, and pray. Help us to remember that. And we can talk to you about anything. And, Lord, help us to know that you are with us. And whatever you ask of us, you will give us the, the strength to be able to do it for you. That's right. So help us, Lord, to remember that you are with us and that whatever you ask of us, you will give us the strength to do it, just like you gave to Jesus in the garden. So thank you, Lord. In the name of Jesus, amen. Amen. We will see you all next week, same place, same time for the next Jesus Storybook Bible story. See ya!